All right, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, man, this is a great group. Uh, it's funny watching everybody come in because the, si cause the sides filled up first. It's like nobody wants to sit and have to look at me, and I, I get that. I get that. So sorry for those of y'all that are right in front of me. Um, yeah, just, we'll pray for you. But uh, as, as we get started, let's, uh, let's just have a word of prayer. God, we come to you right now, and we just uh, thank you for, uh, God, just the truth of your word, and God, how it speaks to us, and God, and how there's power in that. And so, Lord, I pray that uh, tonight we just learn a little bit about uh, how powerful your word is and uh, how it can change lives. And, Lord, I pray that you uh, just give us the confidence and boldness to, to share that with others. And so we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, good. It's good. Uh, again, glad everybody's here. Uh, good to see everyone. Uh, so... This is called go time, and the, the idea behind it is uh, the, the Bible says we're to go and, and make disciples. We're go to share our faith. Um, so, can you think of any verses that, that maybe just come to you? Don't have to your mind that that talk about sharing your faith or the gospel or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. That was the whole chapter of Matthew right there. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That's right, yes. You shall go out and you shall be my witness to the other parts of the world. Good. What else? Anything else? All right. Well, hey, that's good enough uh, let's, let, because uh, you guys were reading my notes. Those were the two that, that, that I was thinking about, too. So you, you have, uh, <laughs> you have uh, Matthew 28 that, that does say, uh, we're to go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and behold, I'll be with you until the end of the age. And then you have, it says, uh, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Okay? So, and that's Acts 1.8. So, as you look at these verses up there on the screen, uh, are they optional? It, it, it doesn't, doesn't seem like it's, it's optional. It says, Go. It's not, well, if you feel like it, or go, uh, you know, if your schedule is right, or, you know, well, if, if it works into your schedule, it says go. It says you shall, you shall go out and be my witnesses. And so here, here's the reality of this is um, it's really not optional. Uh, evangelism is something that we're commanded to do. And uh, you have, have books there, folders, and so there's some places where you can uh, fill in the blanks and some of these. Um, take that home with you. Bring it back next week. Bring your Bible next week, too, um, because we're going to be adding to these folders every week so that you'll have, you know, you'll have a folder of, of uh, material to help you so that you'll remember uh, all the things that we learned. So, so take that with you. Bring it back next week and um, fill it out. Um, but evangelism is, is not optional. Uh, it, it, we're commanded to do that. Uh, and we see in these verses that it's, it's really, it's, it's not, not a, our preference. Um, anybody, anybody like, like Lucky Charms? Anybody? I like the yes, that's right. So that, that's my point. Does anybody like the brown parts of the Lucky Charm? You read, oh, okay, you do. Okay, so you like cat food, right? Really? Because that's what, because that's, that's what is. That's, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, if you look at it, I mean, Lucky Charms, if you look at it, everybody likes the marshmallows. I mean, if it weren't for the marshmallows, I don't think anybody would eat it without the marshmallows. And so, so you pick out the parts that you like, and you leave the parts that you don't like. Uh, sometimes when it comes to, to following the commands of God, this is what we do. We, we treat them like Lucky Charms. We, we pick out the parts we like, oh, I, I, you know, I want to do this, and I want to do that. This is easy for me to do, but, you know, share Christ, oh, that, no, that's too hard. That's too icky. I'm going to leave that. That's, that's like cat food. I don't want that. And so we pick out the parts that we like and we leave the others. But if we're going to be faithful followers of Christ, we don't get to do that. We, we, have, to, we have to eat all of it, all right? We have to do all of it. And so uh, we need to make sure if we're going to be faithful followers of Christ, we have to, to share the good news. Uh, but the good news is it's, it's not as hard as we make it. Uh, the, the thing is Satan wants to do everything that he can to make 
And you sharing your faith as hard and as scary and as daunting as possible. Because here's the deal. If you're a believer, he's already lost you. All right? And so what he wants to do is two things. Uh, one, help cause you to live in fear so that you won't share your faith. Or to make you so comfortable that, that you, you won't really think about it too much. And, and so if he can do that and he keep, can keep, get you to keep your, your mouth closed however he does that, then that's a win for him. But we're not going to let him win. We're, we're going we're to step up and we're going to share. We're going to do the things that God calls us to do. And again, you're going to find out it's not, it's not as hard as you think it is. That you can do, anybody can do this. Um, but why, why are we... Why are we afraid to share? I mean, let's, and so t- let me give you an overview of tonight. Tonight, we're just going to kind of lay the foundation. We're going to talk about, you know, why are, why are we scared? What is the gospel? We throw this term around a lot in church, but what is that? And, and, and then we're going to look at a, a couple of other things. But, but why, why are we so scared? What, what, is so, what, what are some of the reasons why we don't share our faith? What are some of the reasons? Yes, sir. They might ask you something you might not know how to answer. Exactly, yeah. So somebody might ask me something that, that I don't know, and if, if I don't give them the right answer, man, something bad might happen. What else? Yeah. Fear of public speaking. Yeah, fear of public speaking, yeah. Uh, yeah. What else? Just fear of them rejecting. Exactly, yeah. Fear of rejecting, yeah. We're not ready. We're not ready, okay, good, yeah. What else? They get mad at you. Yeah, yeah, you, and depending on who, who you're sharing with, they, they, they might get mad at you, they might get upset with you, yeah. What else? Be outcast. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. They might they might reject you again, especially if it's somebody of, of a different faith background. Uh, they they might get upset. They might say, I, you know, if that's who you are, I don't want anything to do with you. Yes, sir. Might think we're being judgmental. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yes, good, good. Inexperience. Inexperience. Yeah, yeah. We we're not confident in, in what what we're doing. We, we've never done it, and so we're we're not sure of ourselves. Definitely, good. We don't think it's the perfect opportunity. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we want all the stars to align and everything to be perfect before, before we share our faith. Uh, good. Ridiculed. Yeah, yeah, we're afraid people make fun of us. So we'll be ridiculed. Good. Anything else? We've not been patient to hear the call to do it. Okay, yeah. If we, we separate ourselves, yeah. so we don't feel that call so that we... Okay, yes, so we're not, we're, not, we're not living in close communion with Christ, and so we don't feel compelled. Yeah, if, you know, the Bible says we continue to, to reject the Holy Spirit, then our, our heart gets numb, it gets hard, it gets calloused. And so if we continue to, to reject that, that call, then, then there will be times where we may not be sensitive to the Holy Spirit leading us. That's good. That's good. Well, man, that, that's a great list. And so let's, let's just talk about some of those. Um, the first one is, um, I don't know what to say, or I'll mess up. And this is a fear that a lot of us have. Um, if uh, somebody has Matthew 10, has their Bible, can they look up Matthew 10, uh, verse 19 and 20? And I'm going to ask you to read it in just a second. But, um, so what happens if we, we <clears throat> what happens is we're afraid that we'll mess up, that if something I say is wrong, and this person that I'm sharing with, you know, that, and, and we understand the gravity of what we're sharing. Uh, you, this, this person's eternity is in the balance, whether they, they go to heaven and hell. And so we feel that weight on us. And if I, if I say the wrong thing, then, then they, they might die and go to hell. And so it's, it's up to me to get it all right. I've got to get this right. I've got to get it perfect. And if I don't, uh, then, then everything's going to mess up. Um, who's got Matthew 10, 19 and 20? Okay, yeah, read it, read it loud. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Yeah, and so when we share, when we have that, that, that uh, the, 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 when we, we come to this opportunity to share, it's not us sharing. It, it's God sharing. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. Uh, when you think that it's up to you, uh, you're trying to do God's job. All he asks us to do is go. That's all he asks us. You saw the two commands. It wasn't save that person. It was go and share. That's it. That's your job. And, and the results, everything else after that, and we're going, you're going to hear this over and over again. That's the result. That all you do is you leave the results to God. You be faithful to share. And the Bible says that, that as you share, in Isaiah 55, it says that his word will not return void. 
And so what that means is anytime that you, you share scripture, anytime you share the gospel, something good's going to come out of it. Now, we may never see it. We may never understand it. But if we believe that promise that God's word never returns void, uh, then, then that's what's going to happen. So, so we share. And uh, we, we don't worry about the results. And I know that's easy to say. And sometimes we're, we're burdened when people, people re, you know, reject what we say when it comes to the gospel because we, we, usually it's somebody we love. And even if not, it's another human being. And we want them to be eternity in heaven. And so, so to see that is, is, is a heavy weight. But it's not us. It's not up to us to, to share the gospel. Uh, it was up to us to share the gospel. It's not us to, up to us to save them. That's God's job. We don't save them. Uh, I remember the first time when I, when I first moved to Texas, um, just, uh, we had a regular visitation program, and I'd been out quite a few times, but you know, I was at a new church. I didn't know where I was at. I didn't know anybody, and so I'm going to share it with, with this student. And um, it was just the worst gospel presentation ever. I mean, it was terrible. And so I go up, and this girl was there, and I'm like, hey, um, yeah, um, I'm Steve and uh, Jesus, and God loves you. And, uh, and it, was, it was awful. And so I'm sharing this with her, and I'm super nervous. And I get done, and I said, well, you know, is this something you'd like to do? Would you like to ask Christ in your life? And she said, yes. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> after that, that really you, you, you'd like to share, you'd like to accept Christ after that, and uh, but you know why? It's not me doing the saving. God honored me going out, even if it was a horrible gospel presentation. God honored that, uh, and, and His Holy Spirit moved through that. What what I didn't know, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, is is that that she had been coming to our church for a little while, and, and God had been laying the foundation on her heart using other people. To, to lay that foundation, uh, to, and I was the one that just got to reel her in the boat. And so uh, God can use a terrible gospel presentation. What God can't use is silence. God can't use silence. If you refuse to share, if you refuse to go out and share uh, what, your testimony, if you refuse to share the gospel, God can't use that. And, and you know, there's, there's this idea that the sin of silence, where, where we are not being faithful when we, when we share the gospel, because we're told to go. Uh, and so, so I, I understand the, the, the feeling of, of what, what if I mess up, but you've got to keep in your mind, I'm not the one that's saving them. They're not, and we'll get to this in a second, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting God. Even though it feels like it, they're rejecting God. And so he's the one to save it. So if, if we really believe this, that God's the one that, that does, do we really believe this? Do we really believe that God's doing saving? If you do say, I believe. All right, then you can do this. Just take a deep breath. Pressure's off. It's God's job to save them. The pressure's off. And so if you're just faithful to, to share, and again, that, that doesn't mean that, that we're not being prepared, but you by, by you being here, you're saying, hey, I want to be prepared. I, I want to be able to share my faith. And so you just take a deep breath. God, this is your, you know, you're the one that saves. I, I need your Holy Spirit to start working in this person. And, and I'm, you know, I'm a little bit nervous about this. I don't know how this is going to work out. But, but I'm leaving it up to you. Here we go. And so, remember, it's, it's up to God. Uh, you know, I was sharing with you about the, the girl that I shared with. Uh, the Bible says that, not the Bible, but statistics say that a person has to hear the gospel usually seven to ten times before they accept it, depending on what, what, what statistics you read. So seven to ten times. So what if you're just number three? You're still part of the process. Uh, and that was what was happening with, uh, with that girl that I shared. So that nine other people had shared with her. And I just happened to be number 10. And I uh, got to see, see her, her say. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 says this, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. This is Paul talking. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one. And each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. And so that's what we are. We're, we're the workers. And so one of us plants, one of us waters. God's the one that brings the growth. God's the one that brings the increase. God's the one that, that brings the fruit, fruit of the gospel in somebody's life. It's his Holy Spirit that, that draws them to him. And so, so that should, should give us just this, this big sigh of relief that, okay, it's not... It's not up to me to save this person. It's up to me to just share, to just go and share.
Um, next next fear, um, reason or, or hesitation that we have in sharing the gospel is fear of rejection. Fear of rejection. And again, who are they reject? Are they rejecting you? Are you doing the same? If you're if you're not the one doing the saving, then then they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. If God's the one that's that, that draws them to Him, if He's the one that, that's really in, in charge of this process, then they're not they're not rejecting you. Now it feels like it sometimes, and sometimes it, you know they might go off on you and they might get upset. I, but, but let me let me say this too. I, 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 I've been doing this for a long time, and I have had very few people really get upset at me for sharing the gospel with them. I've had to say, no, thank you, I'm not interested. And, but I, I've never had somebody just get, get, I mean, just a couple, just really just get mad. Just, just, and so, so put that fear out of, out of your mind. And I say that, and somebody's like, hey, Steve, I did that, and the I, first person I shared with, they, they cussed me out. So uh, it could, <laughs> I, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I'm saying that the majority... Uh, of times when my, my personal experience that 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 really hasn't happened and so that fear of rejection and uh, you know if you come at it especially the best evangelism takes place in the context of relationships and so if you're if you're sharing Christ with somebody that you already know that you love and you care about and you say hey look I, I want you to know hey I, I care about you and, and uh, you know, I've seen you around I, I care about you and, and I want to make sure that you're going to the same place I'm going when, when I die and when you die, I want to make sure that we're going to be. And you, you, you come at that with, with care and compassion. They might reject it, but they're they're probably not going to get mad because they, they see that you care. Uh, the next one is that I don't I don't have a great testimony. Sometimes we, we think that you know we hear these testimonies of these people where they you know they were Satan worshippers and drug addicts and and all these things. They did all these terrible things, and then Christ changed their life, and they're a totally different person. And, and that's great. And God does that. God does those kind of works in, in, in some people's lives. But it's not everybody's. But that doesn't mean that your testimony isn't great. It doesn't mean that your story is not great. Because, you know, my story is probably a lot like a lot of y'all. I got saved when I was seven years old. I grew up in church. I, I wasn't a bad kid. I mean, you think about it, seven years old. What, you know, I'm not cussing out my mom. I'm not beating my dog. I'm not, you know, sniffing glue. I mean, I, I was seven. I might have ate some, but I wasn't sniffing it. <laughs> and so you think about all these things. I, you know, I was a pretty good kid. But, but see, the thing is what we got to understand about sin is it's more than just the outward actions that we do. It's an attitude of the heart. And it's that rebellious nature. And if you've had kids, you know, you don't have to teach your kids how to sin. You don't have to teach, you don't have to say, hey, Johnny, hey, look, here's how you lie, okay? When I ask you something, you say the totally opposite thing. You don't have to do that well, because we're all born with the sin nature. We, we have that rebellious nature inside of our hearts. That, that, and that nature is where we see the, the, the acts of sin, where we see the, the, the rebellion against parents and, and the, you know, where we uh, see all of the, the lies and stealing and all that. But it's because of our heart, because of a sickness in our heart. And so at seven years old, guess what? I had that. I had this, this sin nature, and I, I am living in the middle of nowhere, in the nothing little city called Chula, Georgia, you've probably never ever heard of. And uh, God looked down at seven years old and said, I want that little boy in my family. I want that little rebellious child, I want him to be a part of my family. So much so that I'll send my only son, Jesus Christ, to die for him. Guess what? I have a great testimony. Not because of what I did, but because of God and his great love. He looked down and he said, I want him to be a part of my family. So much so that I'm willing to give my son to die for him. And guess what? If you're a Christian, you have the same story. That God looked at you and said, I want you to be a part of my family. And I'm willing to give the most precious thing that I have to be a part of that, for you to be a part of that family. And so don't, don't say that I don't have a great testimony. You do. You might just have to reword it a little bit, but everybody's testimony, the fact that, that God saves us by his grace, not that we have to earn it, that's a great testimony. And so don't, don't, don't believe that lie. Your testimony is great. Um, next one is I'm, I might lose friends or people might make fun of me. Um, again, if, if you come at this in the, in the context of care, and you know, I'm, sharing, I'm sharing this because I care about you, not because you're a project or because we're trying to check off a bunch of boxes, but because I care about you. I care about your eternity. I care about your eternal life. Um, uh, <clears throat> then that's going to go a long way. 
And uh, when people know that you care about them, that's the reason. Even if they don't accept it, then you, there, there's less of a chance that, that people might make fun. But it happens. It happens. And, uh, Jesus says, hey, they persecuted me. They're going to persecute you. And so when we step out of faith, when we start living out our faith, uh, Satan's not going to like it. And, and uh, it's, it's going to happen sometimes. But uh, Galatians 1.10 says this, Are we seeking the approval of man or God? If I'm seeking man's approval, I would not be a servant of Christ. So, so Paul's saying, for me to be a servant of Christ, I, I can't seek man's approval. And so I can't let that fear of rejection keep me from, from sharing the gospel. Uh, next one, uh, we talked about this this morning. Somebody else will do it. Somebody else will do it. You know, there's a lot of Christians out there, a lot of people in our church, somebody else will do it. Um, but that, that is one of the biggest lies that, that Satan wants you to believe, that somebody else will do it. Uh, you can look around our country. You can look around this community. Somebody's not doing it. It's not getting done. And so we need to be doing it. Uh, we need to be sharing. God, God has you where you're at for the reason to, to share. The, the, the family that you're in, the neighborhood that you're in, the job that you're in, uh, wherever, your, your sphere of influence, those people that you, you touch, that don't know Christ. He's got you there for you to share and, and to, to share, share his love with them. Um, here's another one that, that we don't think about a lot, but maybe we're too guilty to share because um, my life isn't really a picture of Christ. My life isn't a picture of Christ. It, you know, I'm, my life isn't a witness. You know, uh, the important thing about uh, sharing your, your life, is not, you don't have to be perfect when you share your testimony, when you're witnessing, but there needs to be something about your life that, that shows that you're different, that shows that you're a Christian. Uh, you know, I have friends, um, I had a friend in seminary, and she would say, well, I don't, I don't have to share my faith. Um, people will just see that from my good life. Um, my, my, my life is my testimony. And, and you know what, that's, that's okay, that's part of it, but that can't be all of it. Because they can just look at you and say, well, hey, Steve's just a good old boy. And they don't understand why I live my life the way that I do. That they're never going to make that connection that the reason that I live my life the way that I do, the reason that, that I, I live different from the world is because of what Christ has done to me. They're never going to know that unless I share that with them. And so it's got to be both ends. It's got to be the way that I live, but I've also got to share. And so, so it's important that, that we, we make sure that we share Christ, you know, I was meeting with our Sunday school teachers this, uh, this afternoon. We were talking about gospel-centered uh, service, about when we go out as, as a class and we share, we, we serve, we need to make sure that people know why we're serving. It's because of what Christ has done in our life. Uh, you know, I, I went, uh, I told them this story when I, I first uh, went to the church I was working at in Georgia. I, I just got there about two weeks. They had already planned a youth mission trip, and so I went with them, and we went to <laughs> Chicago, and, and we went. And this is a mission, mission trip, and we planted grass. And that's it. And we went to this, this apartment complex. We planted grass. We went to a baseball field and fixed it up and planted. And we didn't share the gospel. We didn't hand out tracts. We didn't have Bible club. We didn't do anything. And I was like, how, how is this a mission trip? How is this different than what happened for humanity or, or United Way, which are great organizations? But we, the, the reason why we do is we, we've got a better reason. Not just, just to do good works. We do it because we want people to know Christ, to know the Christ that's in us. And so when we, when we do those good, when we live out your li our lives in, in a, a way that honors Christ, people need to know it. So, yes, you've got to live your life in a way that, that honors Christ, uh, but you've got to share it too. And, and the, the opposite is, you know, I, I know some people that, that they don't have a problem sharing their faith. But then you see them on the weekends, they're like, what, you're a Christian? And so it's got to be both and. It's got to be your, your life has to measure up. And again, not perfect. We're not shooting for perfection. But, but your life needs to, to, to measure up, that, that, somebody, that they can see some difference in you. Um, Gandhi, if you know him, he was a philosopher, Indian uh, philosopher, and he said, um, I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. If Christians would really live according to the teachings of Christ as found in the Bible, all of India would be Christian today. So it's both and. It's both ends. We, we have to live out our faith, uh, but then also we have to share so people know why. So we can't just say, well, you know, you know people will just know from, from me living a good life. No, we've got to share why. 
We've got to share why. Uh, and then another one is I'm not living out my faith. Sometimes people, we allow the guilt to, to get in our minds, or, or maybe it's, it's because of my past. I, I'm doing too many wrong things that, that, that I'm embarrassed. And, and, and we, need to, we need to push that out. And you don't understand that, 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 that God, yeah, you're a new creation. We looked at that this morning too. 2 Corinthians 5 says that, that we're, we're new creations in Christ. And, and yes, you, you might have had a really rough past, but that, that's gone. You're new. And that could be part of your testimony. Hey, you know, I, I, yeah, I used to, you know, used to do some really rough stuff. Um, but, but I'm not that, that guy anymore. I've got a, a, a friend that, that, that that's his testimony. Uh, he's, he, he just recently just started to take his faith seriously. And so his friends were like, dude, what's, what's wrong with you? You're not going to come, come drinking with us anymore? And no, that's not my life anymore. And then he gets, gets an opportunity to say, you know what, you know, this, Jesus has changed me, and you know, let, me, let me share with you how, you, how, how that can happen. And so don't let Satan get in your mind and say, well, you've done too many bad things. Your, your past is too dark for, for you. No. That's, you look at Paul, he killed Christians. I, I mean, if you, look, if you think about all the people that, that we revere in the Bible, if, if you, were, you wouldn't hire them in your business. Okay? <laughs> you wouldn't. What, what, Moses, Moses was a murderer. He, he killed somebody. You, oh, well, well, we'll look past that. You can come on. Come work for us. He's, he obviously had anger issues. <laughs> I mean, David, he, he committed adultery and then covers it up by basically murdering a guy. But what does God say? He's, he's a man after God's own heart. And so God can use anybody. And so that's part of our history. So don't allow this idea that, well, I've messed up too much. I, 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 can't, I can't share my faith. Uh, no, God, God, can, God can use anybody. Now, maybe if you're, you're alive, maybe, maybe God's convicting you because maybe there are some things that, that you need to change. Hebrews 12 says that we're to, we're to strip off every hindrance and everything, every sin that slows us down. And keeps us from, from sharing the gospel. So, so maybe God's using this to, to say, hey, there are some things you need to change. And the Holy Spirit does that sometimes. But don't let that keep you from sharing the gospel. Uh, no matter how bad you are. If, you, if there's some things you need to work on, fix that. But, but we're commanded to go and share. And then the last one, I'm, I'm not sure about my own faith. I'm not sure about my own faith. I, I, don't, I don't really know that I'm saved. Uh, I was doing a, a training just like this with, with some students one time, and we were talking about how to share your testimony. And we started talking about it and explaining what it is, and he's like, um, I don't know that I have one. I'm like, all right, well, let's talk about that. And uh, he got saved there. We talked about it, and you shared what a ser- uh, testimony is. And so, hey, there's almost 50 people in here. The reality, odds are, there could be someone in here that they, they don't know Christ. Hey, we can take care of that real quick, and then you will have a testimony. And so if that's, if you, if you, that's not you, if, if that's where you're at, and you don't know, hey, let's, let's, let's get that settled uh, so that you can get forward and you can start sharing, um, you can start sharing your faith. Um, like I said this morning, there is no plan B. If we don't share, if, if you and I don't, don't take seriously this, this call to, to share the gospel, then nobody else is going to. There's a story, it's, it's not biblical, it's kind of a myth or a story, but that, that uh, when Jesus, right when he came back to heaven, uh, Gabriel said, hey, Jesus, you know, um, you did a lot for those people down there while, you, while you're on earth. And he said, yeah. And you suffered a lot for those people down there. And Jesus said, yeah, I did. He said, do, do they all know how much you loved them? Do they all know uh, what all you did for them? Do all those people down there know what all you did? And Jesus said, no, not yet. Well, what, what do you mean? Why, why don't they know? And he said, well, there's a couple of people. You know, there's a couple of people down there in, in Palestine that, that, you know, that I'm counting on them to share, and then they'll share, and then they'll share. Well, Jesus, surely you've, there's more to your plan than that. <laughs> surely you, you've got more to, to do to, to let all the people know. He said, that's it. So Gabriel, knowing how unreliable people are, he said, Jesus, come on now. There's, there's something else to your plan. He said, no, Peter, James, John, some, some other guys, they're down there. They're going to share. And as they share, they're going to share. And he said, well, what if they forget? What if they forget? And, and when, when people in the, in the 20th, 21st century come along, they forget about you. Surely there's a plan B. 
Nice. Nope. I'm depending on them to do it. I'm depending on them to do it. And so it, it's been said that, that Christianity is just one generation away from dying. Just one generation from dying. And, 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 and the, the, the hope, though, that we have is, is God says he's always going to have a witness somewhere. But the problem is it may not be here in America. It may be in Korea somewhere, some place where, where God's doing some great things. There's, there's massive revivals going on in other places in the world. In fact, do you know that, that countries now send missionaries here? Because they look at us and they're like, do those people know Jesus? And so they, they, send, <laughs> they send missionaries here. And so we need to make sure that we're, we're sharing. We're, we're one generation away of people not knowing Christ and being a, 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 non, a non-Christian nation. So any questions, any thoughts about that real quick? Okay, so we talked about why we share, what are some reasons that we, we don't share, what are some excuses. What do we share? The good news? Yeah. What, the, what is the gospel? Yeah, it's good news. That's, that's what we share. Y'all are looking in your books. So, okay, I see, what, I see what's going on. Yeah, gospel. Gospel means good news. Um, uh, it co- occurs about 93 times in the Bible, and it, it's a Greek word, uh, euangelion, and that may, it literally means good news. It's where we get the word evangelist, um, evangelism, those kind of things, and it means good news. Now, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, verse 3. <clears throat> it says this, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance to the Scripture, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance to the Scriptures. That's the gospel. Right there, in that, that, those two verses, that is the gospel. And so Paul's saying, he's saying, I, I, I deliver to you as of first importance. And Paul's saying that this is the most important thing that I've shared with you. Of all the things that I've shared, this is the most important thing. That Christ died for our sins in accordance to the scriptures. <clears throat> that he, he rose again in accordance to the scriptures. This is what's most important. That he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. This is the gospel. And, and sometimes what, what we do is we, you know, the, this term gospel is thrown around a lot uh, in church circles. And we hear, you know, this is the gospel. That's the gospel. This is the gospel. This, Paul says, this is what's first, most important. But sometimes we make uh, the gospel into to, it, almost whatever we want it to be. You know, I had a friend I saw on social media. He's a pastor. And um, he said, well, you know, the, the gospel is us working for social justice. And, you know, I'm thinking that's, that's not the gospel. The gospel is that, that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, that he rose again. That's the gospel. Now, those things that we do are the fruit of the gospel. Now, there's a difference. Okay, the fruit of the gospel is when we do go serve others, where, where we go and uh, you know, provide clean water, where we help the homeless, where, where we do these things, where we do fight, fight the wrongs in society. That's the fruit of a good gospel, but that's not the gospel. Here's, here's why that's important, that we get that, get that. That's what I struggled with on that mission trip I went to Chicago with. We were trying to do the fruit of the gospel, but we didn't share the gospel. So we were trying to go do good works, but we never shared the gospel. And so you, you, you can't make the gospel into something. Else. Jesus has already just told us what the gospel is, that, that Jesus died that he was buried, that he rose again on the third day for our sins. That's the gospel. And so we've got to make sure that, that we, we keep that uh, the main thing. And so as we share, uh, we, we could do all these other good things. We can provide clean water. We can give every homeless person a house. We can, uh, you can feed every, every person that's hungry. We can do all, the, all these are good things. But if we do all of that, 
We can teach people that, that are bad. We can, we can reform every, every drug addict and every person in jail. If we do all of that and they never have Christ in their life, guess what? They still go to hell. Because the gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And he was buried and he was raised again. And so this is the gospel. This is what we need to share uh, and, and nothing else. Uh, do we do those things? Yes, those are the fruit. Those are the results. And because Christ has changed me, I do want to help those that are in need. But as I do, I tell them why. Because Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again, according to the scriptures. So when you're sharing, uh, there, there's lots of different ways, that, that uh, lots of different formats that you can share the gospel, lots of different presentations. And so for me, I, just share whatever works for you. I mean, there's, you know, Billy Graham's uh, Steps to Peace with God. There's uh, Continuing wish, wit, Witnessing Program, CWT, Evangelism Explosion. Uh, there's all these, these ways to share the gospel. Just, just share it. Just, just do what works. But, but if, if you're going to use a, a gospel presentation, there's a couple of elements that everyone needs to have. Every, if you're going to share the gospel, there's, there's some, some, a couple of points that, that, that you need to, to make sure are in uh, that presentation. And... Um, so we just want to break down this verse. It says, Christ died for our sins. Christ died for our sins. So the first thing that you need to do when you're sharing Christ with somebody is, is you need to help them understand that, that they are a sinner, that, that they've messed up. Okay? Uh, you know, a person has to know that they're lost before they can be saved. And so you have to help them understand it. And this is a part that sometimes that, that people might get a little offended. But you just say, hey, look around. Hey, can't you see that, there, that this world is, is broken, that there's something messed up in this world, that things aren't right? Don't, don't, don't you feel deep down inside that there's, there's something not right with, what, with what's going on? Is it in, you know, maybe there's an emptiness in your own life. God, God didn't create it to be that way. That's not his intention, but because sin has, has, has messed up and broken and fractured the world, that's why we have these problems. And, and, and you have participated in it. I have participated in that. And so it, they need to know that, that we all have sinned. Romans 3.23, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so, so whatever presentation, if it, if it leaves out sin, then, then, then you, 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 I would find a different presentation. And that's the thing is sometimes, again, because we don't want to there, – there was this movement that came out that, that was called seeker-sensitive movement. And, 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 they, and they said, well, you know, we don't want to offend people when they come to church. And so we don't want to talk about sin. We don't want to talk about the blood. We don't want to call, talk about the cross. And, and the thing is, guess what? Jesus doesn't need us to be our, his PR consultant <laughs> because that's what we're doing. We're like, well, we've we got to make things look better for you. He knew what he was doing. He said it's going to be offensive sometimes. He says the gospel is offensive to, to those who, who are not, not a, a Christian. And so it's going to be offensive sometimes. But, but that, so that, that doesn't give us the opportunity to, to, to water it down. We have to share the truth. We have to share the truth. And so people need to know that, that they're sinners, that we've all sinned. Now, here's the problem. Uh, it's, it, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, what that means is, uh, you know, so, so some versions say, have fallen short of God's standard. Now, what is God's standard? Perfection. Perfection. Exactly. And so we've all fallen short of that. Because, see, see, here's the problem that, that you're going to have. People are going to say, you know what, I, I think I'll go to heaven. Because, you know, the, one of the ways that, that we start is, hey, if you were to die today, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven? Yeah. Well, why do you think that? Because I'm a good person. Okay, according to who? Compared <laughs> To who? No, that's the, compared to who? Because, yes, you're probably a better person than your neighbor. You're probably a better person than the guy that you work with uh, at work. But that's not the standard. The standard is God's standard. He's the one that sets the standard, not the guy sitting next to you. And so that's the standard that we go. And so we, his standard says all have fallen short. If just a little bit of sin contaminates your whole body. If, uh, if I brought brownies in everybody, and you ate them, and I said, oh, by the way, I forgot, you know, my, my dog Gracie, you know, she, I had some poop on my hands, and I accidentally got that in the brownies, but it was just a little bit. Is any of you going to say, hey, can I have another one? <laughs> but it's just a little bit, right? 
No, no, no takers for seconds? <laughs> no, why? Because just a little bit contaminates the whole batch of brownies. Just a little sin, one sin is all it takes for me to be contaminated by sin. For me to, to, to fall short of that standard. And, 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 and the, Claudia can tell you, I've got a lot more than one. All right? I, I know you probably put me on the pedestal. Oh, Steve, he never did. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm one way down here. And if we're all honest, we, we, we all, we all have fallen short of that, that standard. We've fallen short of that. Um, so the standard is perfection, and we've all missed that. In fact, that's what sin means. The, the literal definition, the literal meaning of sin means missing the mark, where you're trying to, to hit that perfection and you don't. And we've all missed that mark at some point in our life, and that means we're contaminated by sin. And because of that, uh, we, we, we're not able to have that relationship with God. Because of that also, that, that sin deserves punishment. So Christ died for our sins. Christ died. And so what that means is our sin deserves punishment. That because we sinned, somebody's got to be punished for that. God is a good and just judge. All right? And if a, a good judge enforces the law, you wouldn't, if, 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 if somebody was killed that you um, were really close to, uh, you wouldn't want that judge to say, oh, you know what, it's not that big a deal. We're, we're just going to let them slide. You'd be upset. You know, no, I want justice. Now, when it's us, we want, we want mercy. We want grace. You know, oh, well, you know, God. But, but if somebody else, if somebody else were to, to kill somebody we love dearly, we'd say, no, I want justice. And a good judge does that. A good judge enforces the law. And so God, because he is the good and righteous and holy, he must enforce the law. He must enforce the idea that, that when someone sins, there has to be punishment, and that punishment is death. And, and it's not just physical death. It's eternal death. And so you think about it, you're like, well, look, man, that's... And you might have somebody say, well, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I get I'm perfect, but I don't know that I really, I really deserve hell. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty, pretty, pretty harsh punishment. You know, you know maybe I you know, deserve something else. I, you know, I know I've done wrong. Yeah, 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 I get it. But, but I, don't, I don't know that I deserve that. But we do, and here's why. Uh, anybody ever have a, have a brother or sister growing up? Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever hit that person, just, just slap them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a couple of people around. Yeah, everybody did, okay? <laughs> if, you, if you hit your brother or sister, uh, what was that punishment? What was the punishment? You get hit back. You get hit back, okay, yeah. So you might get spanking. Uh, you, might, uh, you might get a spanking by your parents. You might get put in timeout. You might, you might you know, lose, some, uh, lose some privileges. And so that's, that's, that's pretty much the extent of, of slapping your sister. What if you were to slap a cop? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about it back in the day when things made sense. Yeah, you, you, get, you get charged with assault, maybe some jail time. Now, what if you went to a foreign country, uh, in a, you know, maybe like a Muslim, so, and you go up to their king and you slap them? If you made it to them, yeah, you would probably die. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What's the difference? Because the action that you're doing is the same thing. You're slapping your sister. You're slapping the cop. You're slapping the king. What's the difference? Yeah, who you're slapping. And so here's the deal. We, with our sin, we have slapped an eternal God in the face. And because of that, it deserves an eternal punishment. The punishment is determined on who's offended, and we have offended an eternal God, and because of that, we deserve an eternal punishment. And so God, being that good and right judge, must enforce that, that punishment. And so we, must, we, are die, we, we have to die for our sins. So, apart from Christ, if God, God's going to enforce this punishment, then, then we die, we go to hell. And guess what? We deserved it. We deserved it because we have slapped this eternal God and it deserves an eternal punishment. But the good news is it doesn't have to be that way. God would have been right to, allow, to leave things the way they were. He would have been right and just to leave things the way they were and let us die in our sins. 
But he said, hey, I, I want to make a way where that doesn't have to happen. And so Christ died for our sins. Christ did. So, so, so what that is, Jesus, Jesus is the Son of God. What that means, Jesus had no sin. He lived up to that perfect standard. And because of that, he could take your place. See, I can't die for your sin. You know why? I got my own. I got plenty to die for, all right? I can't die for yours. You can't die for me. But Jesus Christ, being that, that perfect person, he can be that perfect lamb, that perfect sacrifice that comes in and takes away your sin. And he takes the punishment that you deserve. And so God is still just. There is still punishment that is, that is being meted out for your, your sin. But Jesus is the one that takes it, not you. That's good news, right? That's good news. That's the gospel. And so Christ, the, the perfect one, is the one that's able to take away our sin. So what that means is I can't work for this. We're not saved by, by good works. You know, there's, there's this idea. Satan has done a great job of selling this idea that, that when you die, you get to heaven, and God puts all your good works on this side and puts all your bad works on this side. And if the good works uh, even you know, are way more than the bad, then you get to go to heaven. That is nowhere in the Bible. That, that is fantasy. But, but for some reason, we believe that. And if I'm a good person and my good works outweigh my bad works, then I get to go to heaven. That's not in the Scripture. Listen, I know this is going to sound very Good people don't go to heaven. Good people don't go to heaven. People who have a relationship with Christ go to heaven. You want to talk about moral? Mormons are very moral people. Muslims are very moral people. But they don't have Christ. And so it's, it's the relationship with Christ. It's Christ. And so that means we can't earn it. That means that we can't, can't uh, do anything to save ourselves. Acts 4.12 says this, Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we are saved. Nobody. And so it's only by Christ. Jesus says that. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no man gets to heaven except by me. That's what Jesus says. And so if we want to, to avoid this punishment that we have justly earned, Christ is the only way. And so when you're sharing Christ with somebody, you've got to let them know that Christ is the only way, that there's no other way. That, you know, again, there's another idea that, well, you know, there's lots of ways to heaven, and, you know, if you just, just pick one and you're sincere. No, it's not in the Bible. That's a lie. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And that, that's offensive to some people. Uh, people say that's closed-minded, that's intolerant. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm just sharing, sharing what, what God's Word says. I'm, I'm sorry if, if you don't believe that. Hey, I'd love to keep this conversation going, um, but, but this, this, Jesus says he's the only way, and um, you know, I'm sticking by that. <clears throat> the other thing in Romans 10, 13 says, whoever, comes, comes to, uh, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> the great news about that is no matter how far below this standard that you've fallen, there's hope for you. <laughs> Whoever. You know what the Greek word for whoever means? Whoever. <laughs> it's anybody. Anybody that, that calls upon the name of the Lord, that asks this Christ into their life, shall be saved. And it doesn't matter how bad you were in the past. It doesn't matter how many times you've messed up, how many times you've rejected God. Anybody can be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then the last thing is Christ was raised. Christ was raised. Christ was raised from the dead. And so what that means is um, we're committing our lives not to a bunch of rituals. We're committing our lives to a living, risen Christ. We're, we're entering into a relationship. And so that's another thing that I think we, we sometimes in the church, we, we, when we talk about salvation, we make it, I don't want to say too easy, but, but we kind of do. Because we, we make it sound like, well, you pray a prayer, and then you can just go out and do whatever you want. That's, that's not biblical Christianity. It says that, that, that if you really are, are serious about your faith in Christ, that, that there will be a change in you. There can't help be a change in you because you've got the Holy Spirit living inside of you. If I've got the Holy Spirit of this God that's all-powerful, all-knowing, if he's living inside of me, shouldn't I be different than somebody who doesn't have that? 
There should be a big difference in that. And so the Bible says that, that there should be fruit in my life, that, that, that as, as I live out my life, that there's going to be fruit that, we're, that people can see. And so it, it's more than just praying a prayer. It, it, it's committing your life. It's entering into a commitment. Almost like, it's like a marriage where I'm, I'm giving my life to Christ. I'm committing to him that I'm going to live for you. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to mess up. And guess what? He knows that. That's the great thing about Jesus. He knows what he's getting before he gets it. And some people are like, well, yeah, I'm, so, I'm so messed up. I'm so broken. Yeah, he knows that. He knew that before he called you. He knows what he's getting. And he still says, come on, be a part of my family. I want you to join. I want you to be a part of all of this. And so we're entering into a, a relationship. It's a commitment. It's not just praying a prayer. And, and so be careful when, when you share that. You help, help people understand that, that it's not just, just praying a prayer and going on. Because what, what happens is a lot of times, especially you know, as I work with youth, that, that they would have this emotional experience, maybe at a youth camp or a retreat or something, but they really didn't understand what they were doing. And guess what? Next year at youth camp, they have that same emotional experience. And the next year they have the same thing because they didn't understand about a commitment that, that, that life the, the, the Christian life means that, that, that your life should bear fruit because you've been changed. And so it's a commitment to, to live for Christ. Any questions about that? Any thoughts? Okay. Uh, somebody turn to, well, let's all turn to John 1. John 1. Oh man, we gotta hurry. Okay, turn turn real quick. Uh, John, 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 one verse forty-three. I just want to briefly touch about this idea of testimony. What 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 is a testimony? If you're you know, in court of law. What, what, when the person gives their testimony, what are they doing? Yeah, they tell them what they're doing. They're sharing their story. You know, if they, they witnessed a you know, wreck, and they're, they're getting up there and saying, hey, I saw the guy, he, he ran a red light, and this, 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 this is what happened. Your testimony is just sharing your story. And so one of the most powerful tools in sharing your faith is just sharing your story. Hey, this is what I was like before Christ. And this, this is what happened. And this, this is what, what happened that, that helped me realize that my need for Christ. And now this is what my life is like afterwards. Well, that's powerful. And, and you, as you read the, the, the New Testament, Paul is constantly talking about, hey, this is how I used to be, but this is how I am now. Uh, this, to me, is one of the, the most, I, I, don't know, I, love, I love this story. Uh, one of the, the, the most powerful uh, pictures of testimony uh, John 1, verse 43, it says, The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip, and he said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him who Moses in the law of the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And then Nathanael said to him, Can anything come out of Nazareth that is good? Philip said, Come and see. So, so here you have Jesus, he, he, he comes to Philip, and he says, follow me. And, and Philip realizes, okay, this is, this is the promised one, this is the Messiah, this is the one that we've been waiting for. Now, this is one day, it's not that, that Philip then goes to seminary, he doesn't take a class like this, he doesn't you know, learn you know, 15 scriptures, it's the next day he goes to his friend and says, hey, we found him, we found the Messiah. And then Nathaniel's like, well, can anything good come out of it? He said, I don't know. Just, just come and see. Just come and see what I've experienced. That's it. He shared Christ. And now Nathaniel comes and becomes one of the disciples. He just shared his story. And that's all we're doing when we're sharing our story. We're just, hey, this is what happened to me. Come and see. Come and see. You're not going to be disappointed. This is how Christ changed my life. And guess what? He can do the same thing for you. And so your story, you, you knowing your story and being able to, to condense it down to maybe three to five minutes where, where you can share that can be powerful in, in, in um, telling somebody. Because here's the thing. People can argue. They can argue scripture. They can argue theology. They can argue, but they can't argue their, your story. Well, that didn't really happen to you. Oh, yeah. 
how do you know you weren't there? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And so it's your story. And so that's why it's so, so important to, to know your story, to be able to tell it just like that, and to, uh, uh, to have it in a, in a condensed uh, uh, way, uh, way where it flows. And so, again, what makes your story great is what Jesus did not what you did. And so make sure that, that, that you uh, know your story. In fact, if you've already looked ahead, that's going to be your homework for this week. So you didn't know you had homework. So, yeah. <laughs> yep, you do. All right. So here's the last thing. Second Timothy 1. If you have your Bibles, turn, turn there. Second Timothy 1. Second Timothy one verse seven. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind or self control. And so so many times we 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 worry about what, what God hasn't given us. We worry about the fear, we we fear things. But God's not giving to that. So when we, when we go out to share our faith uh, and we feel that fear, we've got to understand that that's not from God. Because God doesn't give us a, a spirit of fear. And guess what? Hey, I've been doing this for 30 years. I still get nervous. <laughs> I, I do. I, 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 there's, there's times where I'm like, oh, I don't know, God. Are you sure about this? And so there's never going to be a time probably where, where there, you're, there's not going to be a little bit of nervousness, a little bit of angst. But guess what? You push through that. You push through that. And realize that God has not given us a spirit of fear. What has he given us? He's given us a spirit of love. Hey, I love this person, so I'm going to share Christ. Power. He's given us the power of his Holy Spirit and self-discipline for us to, to go through and push through and share this word with, with this person that, that we care about. And so you think about, think about those, those other times when you kind of feel that, that same nervousness. You feel that, that same kind of awkwardness, the 20 seconds of awkward. You know, and I think about, you think about the, the, some of the biggest moments in your life, there's this, this 20 seconds of awkwardness, and you push through and something great happens. You think about that first kiss, where there was this just like, well, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm move in, but you know, what if she rejects me? What, what if I get slapped? You don't know. But you push through that awkwardness and you do that. You know, that first time where you ask a girl out. That, that first time when, when, when you ask somebody to when you ask you ask somebody to marry him, when you give that answer, I don't, I don't know about this guy, I don't know, but <laughs> I'll say yes. There's this this this, this awkwardness, this, this nervousness, but you push through that, and great things happen. It's the same thing when you share your faith. There's going to be this 20 seconds of awkward, where you're gonna you're gonna have a decision where do I push through it? Where you say, hey, hey, you know, if, if you were to die today, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven? They say, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> can I tell you? Can I tell you how you can? Can I tell you how you can? This is what Christ did in my life. And once you push through that, then it kind of starts to flow and it gets a little bit easier. But you've got to push through that 20 seconds of awkward. You've got to push through that 20 seconds of awkward. So, so for, for your homework is this. Uh, you need to uh, make sure that, that you, you write out your testimony. So look at the back of your book. Uh, there's a... Well, you, may, you may have... There should be... Uh, okay. Some people have more than one. Okay. You should only have two pages. Okay. The second page should be an outline for your testimony. Uh, the first page should be an outline of... So we might have gotten that off a little bit. So if you need that, I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you that. So I get extra work to do. Yeah, or some of them are out of order. Okay, I didn't know that either. Okay, all right. Uh, so uh, here's the thing. What, is, what does it say your other homework is? What? Memorize two questions. Yeah, yeah memorize two questions, and then there's a 20 seconds of awkward. What is that? Yeah. So here's the thing. There's two questions that that. We call them diagnostic questions. You know, if you're a doctor, you know, what you do is you, you ask a person, you ask them questions to kind of figure out what's wrong with them or what's going on. And so, so uh, and when we're sharing our faith, we, we want to ask those kind of questions too to see where they're at in their faith. We say, you know, if you were to die today, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven? And so you need to, you need to know that question. 
And the second one is, if you were to stand before God, he were to say, why should I let you into heaven? What would you say? Or what would he say? And that's important because most of the time, most of the time, if, if you ask somebody, hey, why, what would God say to you? Uh, you well, what, do you think you would go to heaven if you were to die? Most people are going to say yes. Most people say, yeah, I, you know, I'm a pretty good person. I think I'm going to go to heaven. And so well, why, why, would you, why do you say that? Why would God let you into heaven? That one takes it a little bit deeper where they're going to have to think and say, well, I don't know. I've never really thought about that. Uh, most of the time, well, I'm a pretty good person. Okay, well, let's talk about that. Can, can I share with you what the Bible has to say about that? That, you know what, we're all sinners, and we've all done wrong. And you have, I have, and because of that, we, we have this need. And so, so those two questions are important to help, they kind of help get you started. All right, then, then I want you to, 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 to learn to wrestle with this, this 20 seconds of awkward. And so, so every week we're going to have a little, little homework of 20 seconds of awkward. So you go and you give a compliment to somebody maybe that, that you wouldn't give a compliment to. Maybe it's a cashier at a, at a grocery store or, or a waiter or somebody like that where you just say, hey, you know, I appreciate you're doing a great job. You know, if, if you're an overly positive person, this is no big deal for you. But if you're kind of, if you're kind of, a, if you're kind of an introvert and you don't, you don't talk a little bit much to people, especially strangers, this might be a little bit harder. But, but, but go ahead and do it. The more that we do, the, the easier it's going to be. And so do that. And then... Um, uh, that, that testimony worksheet, uh, and I'll, I'll break it down for you. Uh, there's three things, par parts of your testimony. What was my life like before Christ? What was my life like before Christ? And so what, what, was, what were the things that were going on in your life? And, and, and so there's a balance here where we don't want to get too much into the gory details if you had a rough life, but we do want to share enough to, to let people know that, hey, you know what? God doesn't just love good people. He loves, you know, somebody like me, no matter how bad you've been, uh, here's some things in my life that, that God forgave. He can do that for you too. And so there's a balance. You don't want to get too gory into all the detail, but, but you want to share enough where people understand that, hey, I, I want a perfect person either. Uh, the last thing we want them to believe that, well, you've got to be a good person to go to heaven. Wow, that's, again, that's, that's not in the Bible at all. And then, how did you come to know Christ? Well, you know, how did, how did I come to know Christ? Well, uh, you know, for me, uh, I, it was uh, my pastor. I was sitting in service. He was talking about salvation. I didn't know what that word meant. I went and talked to my mom. I said, hey, Mom, what, is, what does salvation mean? So she sat me down. She, told, she explained salvation to me. Then she had my pastor come to our house, and he, he explained to me and prayed, and I asked Christ in my life. Then the third thing is, what, what is your life like now? What is your life like now that Christ has come into your life? Well, I, you know, I'm a different person now. You know, instead of being a selfish person, I care about the things of God. And God, God has given me the opportunity to, to, um, to share Christ and to see lives change. And so what, what, what is, you know, your, everybody's story is different. So, so have your testimony. Go, go ahead and write it out. All right? Go ahead and write it out. And, and I'm sorry about the confusion of the books. I will get you a um, – make sure that it's um, – uh, if, you, if you need that testimony worksheet, I can print out some real quick and make sure you have that. Um, but th that's your homework. So uh, make sure you, you do that 20 seconds of awkward, give a compliment to somebody, learn those two questions, write out your testimony. Come back, bring your book, bring your Bible, and we'll, we'll hit it from there. Is that good? good. All right. Hey, this, again, thank you so much for coming. This, this is a great crowd. I'm super excited. And um, uh, you just go out and do, do what you need to. Hey, guess what? You don't have to wait. If, if God presents you the opportunity to share, you don't say, hey, I got four more weeks. Let me come back to you for me. No, you, you can do that right now. You can do that right now. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's pray. Let's pray before we go. God, uh, man, what an encouragement it is to see, uh, God, so many people uh, hungry to, to share your word, to share their faith, and to, uh, God, see your gospel proclaimed. And so, God, I pray that you bless every person in this room as they, as they go out. And, God, even those that maybe weren't able to join us that are watching the live stream, Lord, I pray uh, that you just bless them, God, as they work and seek uh, to, to be better uh, sharers of, of your gospel, Lord. I pray that you give them the strength, the courage, God, that you uh, give them that, that love, that power, of that sound mind that you give them. And, God, I pray that you push away the fear and so that we can boldly share uh, the good things that Christ has done for us. And so, God, I pray you bless us, keep us safe. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.